Welcome to the Avalon Chapel podcast. Each week we'll feature a lecture or a sermon or a presentation that's been delivered on our campus in Elizabeth, Colorado. If you're interested in investigative Christianity, looking at the boundaries to see things that might not quite fit in the framework you've been taught, this is the place for you. Please tune in and enjoy the rest of the show. And if we're helpful to you, drop us a note, send us a line, let us know. You can reach us at slaydragons.org. Again, slaydragons.org. Look forward to hearing from you. Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Avalon Chapel podcast. We're continuing our series, helping you to get through your hero's journey here in 2024. Really excited to do that. Going to give a quick recap of kind of where we are and moving forward into something really practical. We were really in the weeds on scripture the last few weeks, but so we want to get into some things that are kind of moving us forward now that we have that solid base. What is our version of the hero's journey at Avalon Chapel? One we believe everyone has a map to follow. That's your call to adventure, the thing you have to do in life. You want to do something else, you'd rather not in some cases, but ultimately you're drawn to it. It's your vocational thing you need to do in life. The second piece of that is an obstacle to overcome. When you start following your journey, the calling you have in life, you're going to hit trials and tests of all kinds. Think of Jonah in the whale or uh, getting cut off in traffic or losing a job. These are all those trials and tests that you have to overcome to hit your goal. The third part, every good story has a dragon to slay, uh, at least the ones that involve small hobbits, but for sure yours does. And that's the dragon to slay in your life. Those inner and outer demons that need to be dealt with for you to win, to succeed in life. And our goal here at Avalon is to help you with all of it. Now we're in the map to follow section still. That's step one. If you want to get some more information, you can go back through our podcasts and get them. They're all there. And with that in mind, we're going to jump into today. And today's all about success prompts. Success prompts? What's that? Well, I want you to be reminded of your mission all the time. And we're going to use a little bit of neuroscience to do that. So first, I want you to understand a term called a trigger. Now, you might be thinking a trigger like uh, something that you'd find on like a water gun or something like that that you pull and, you know, activates the machine, whether it's a, a gun, water gun, whatever, right? Every, even a hose has a trigger to it. But ultimately, we also have triggers that we respond to. They're stimuli. So that's either internal or external stimuli that cause us to react in some way, shape or form. I could probably say at least one of 10 political person people's names. I'm not going to. But if I because we're a nonprofit and we're not losing that status. But if I did on either side of the aisle, regardless of where you are politically, even if I like allude to one, you'll lose your mind. Like I can, I really can on both sides. And it's great. In fact, I just, I listened to and subscribed to Serious Joy, which is this wonderful service. It's a spiritual service. And this past Saturday, there was this big event. It was multi-hour telecon. And uh, Christopher Watecki, who runs that site, said he routinely gets emails from people on both sides of the aisle complaining that he supports the other side of the aisle. They're like, and he's like, don't assume my politics. He goes, you guys are assuming wrong anyway. And so just noting that triggers can cause an emotional response, especially if we assume the trigger is, is X, Y, or Z. So if we think it's like, you know, uh, pull the trigger, water gun comes out. If the trigger we assume is something negative, which all of us have a propensity to lean towards the negative, we will respond as if that is a trigger that's bad. So we want to identify those negative triggers that set us off. How do you do it? I carry a notebook around with me for a host of reasons, but if I get really mad, like, oh man, something just furiates, infuriates me doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, I write it down and I break it down. One uh, situation that came up is I was getting a rental car traveling and I, I was really trying to get the hotel. I had a late flight. Uh, I stay, I actually had moved my flight to support a church service thing. So I was like, Oh, I made it get there, walk through the rental car, check out. And I walk outside and it's like, 9 30 10 o'clock at night it's freezing and there's a line of maybe 40 45 people sitting on the ground on the concrete waiting for cars there's no one in the building and i'm like uh are, are you serious and like yeah some of us have been here for three hours and i just got like i i didn't yell or anything but i just got so angry right because something had been impacted one of my values and one of those values to me was that the company makes a promise that they'll have a vehicle available for you they didn't meet that promise. So to me, it was a lack of integrity. Now things come up. I recognize that 
The situation isn't to judge why a oh, wow Jim gets mad at rental cars not being available. Total first world problems. I understand that. The issue isn't the situation. The issue is whatever your situation is or mine that causes us to set us off. Let's break it down and see what part of your values or identity is being affected by that anger, that frustration. And we have to recognize that negativity has a huge impact on our emotions, uh, on our, well, it is an emotion, but on our uh, on our uh, physicality or physiology, it takes a lot of energy. And it's also hard to break out of the state of negativity. All of media, whether it's sports, news, you name it, is designed to get you angry. When you're angry, it keeps your attention and you're more likely to buy or follow the product. Negativity sells and it actually uh, uh, works on, on a part of our brain that goes back to almost like you know our uh, lizard ancestors where we're just responding to the event. So it's like uh, saber, saber tooth tiger, run, right? Lion attacking, run. Uh, pterodactyl about to land on me, ah, right? It's this immediate so like stimulus response. Negativity hits that stimulus and our whole society is hitting that stimulus over and over again because they know we'll get the response. Our job is to create a space between stimulus and response, which can be done, but we have to recognize the stimulus as what it is and not just respond to it. What our brains do automatically with the stimulus response thing, and it's, it's a part of your brain called the amygdala. It's called an amygdala hijack. What it does is when you get really mad, you, it's like saber toothed tiger. So in this case, somebody, um, you know, doesn't have a rental car for me. We both realize that's a first world problem, but to my brain, it's a saber toothed tiger. And to you, you might get a bill that's unwarranted from someplace, and that's saber tooth tiger. When you recognize that this is affecting a part of your values and identity, you're able to respond differently. So we have to realize that impact of negativity. So how do you interrupt a trigger? Well, first, we want to have positive triggers in our life. One great example is um, from Brendan Burchard, who's a coach online, talks about Every doorway he puts in, he has a positive trigger that I'm going to positively influence the people in this room. Every time he walks through a doorway, that trigger, and he says it in his, in his mind. Over time, it becomes automated. You don't have to even think about it. Your brain will respond to the trigger without you saying it. Just like if you get cut off in traffic or whatever it might be for you, your body will respond automatically when you train it to do it. So a positive trigger could be like um, you pick up your phone and say, I'm so grateful for life. I actually have a Louise Hay quote on the back of my phone case, and um, I'll just read it to you. It says, all is well. Everything is working out for my highest good. Out of the situation, only good will come. I am safe. And that's mine. And so when I pick up my phone, I can look at that and say it out loud. And then it becomes this trigger where when I pick up my phone, I'm safe. I'm good, right? That's a positive trigger. We interrupt the negative trigger, so the thing that gets us mad, with something positive. So you have to pre-lay these positive triggers in your life. If you're already in fury right now, it, there's very little I'll be able to do. The only thing I've successfully done to interrupt triggers, and, and this comes from Tony Robbins' research, which is based on neuro-linguistic programming, which is really a rabbit hole that we're not going to go down right now. But what I've had is people who are so furious, and then I find something that's unrelated to their fury and point it out. One example was with a kid who came in um, when I was doing counseling in the military. He was in civilian clothes, really upset about something, and I could not break his state, his anger, to even get to the point. And uh, I looked at it and I said, is this because of your shoes? Because they're blue. And there's a stripe on the side. And I said it like that. And he looked at me like I was completely nuts. And you might be thinking the same thing. But what I did was he was angry about something completely unrelated to his blue shoes with a white stripe. But by, by bringing it up, I interrupted his pattern enough that he stopped to think, what is this guy talking about? A pattern interrupt is a technical term for something that gets you like forces you to look at something other than the spiral of emotion you're currently in. This can be anything, but generally the weirder it sounds. So you could even be like, you know, the voice of Elmo is really, really angry. Be like, uh, Elmo's nice, right? Like, I mean, you can't, you can't really argue with how nice Elmo is. So if you say that to someone in a really angry state, they're gonna be like, what are you talking about? It will literally jolt that you will see their brains explode. And I used to do this with the kids. I've tested on my teenagers for their entire life. And I would do this to them. I'd say, oh, this is because your shorts, they're just completely green. And they'd look at me like they'd stop, like they would stop having a fit 
and interrupt enough. So unfortunately, this doesn't work with Huskies, but it does work with humans. So if you want to give the except Huskies, if you're a new listener, but you're welcome to try this at home and see if it works. So having a positive triggers already pre-laid where like you pick up your phone or you sit at a chair and you're like, I am safe and successful, whatever it may be for you, that helps you to interrupt those things when it comes up. Okay. How do you incorporate these in day-to-day life beyond just having a thing like the phone or seat? I'd even suggest a time of day. Some folks, I don't do this anymore, but I used to would set an alarm on my phone that would come up and say like, I am uh, loved totally. Or uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for today. Little little alarms that would come up and remind me of that. Again, I don't do that anymore, but you can put these triggers in your phone easily for free um, and enjoy your time. The other thing is self-talk. Now, most of our society says that you're not good enough, you're not great enough. Frankly, you're just not enough. That's what everything is in marketing for- let's say 90% of everything in marketing, that's probably 10% good out there. But most of it's saying like, you'll be happy if you grab that beer or you grab the food Um, or, you know, or you'll have people of your selected gender, um, super like hotties around you. If you just drink this beverage, like, or travel to this destination, then you'll be happy. That's what all of this marketing is about. It's designed to play off of our inner negative self-talk, which is generally like, yeah, I'm really not good enough. They've got a nicer car, a nicer house or whatever. So how do we circumvent that? in this step of our hero's journey is we need to have positive self-talk all of the time, more than you think you need. I would put this daily, at least first thing in the morning, put it throughout the day, say, I am enough. I, I am amazing. I am, I, I say I am legendary, which if you get the halo reference there, you get extra listener points plus three at that point. But what I do is I say these things throughout the day because I want the positive self-talk to work against whatever negativity I encounter. Now, in my real day job, I work in human resources. And if you've ever worked in HR, um, you understand this. If you if you haven't, you think everyone in HR is just the Satan or the devil in most cases. We're not. Um, most people call us just to yell at us for whatever reason. That's kind of how it is or you know, express anger or frustration. So in that, it can become a very negative environment unless you have this positive self-talk. So moving into HR a few years ago, like I started to do this and I realized it helped me so much in helping people. And what was funny, I remember this, this talk uh, and it helped me to get where I was on the phone with someone who's really upset. They're a very senior person. And I had been doing the self-talk thing and I realized that they weren't angry at me. They were angry at something else. And this was during the pandemic. And I remember just, she just had like finally taken a breath and she had just been yelling. And I, instead of responding to any of the points, I, I said, it's really it's really hard to lead in the pandemic, isn't it? It's really, really hard. And she just started crying, like sobbing, went from angry to this because it was, I had hit something where I understood what she was just frustrated. She was frustrated with all the things going on. She was lonely. She had a hard time dealing with so many responsibilities in this case. And she needed to take that out on someone that someone happened to be me. Now, I didn't do that intentionally. I didn't want her to be up, upset. That wasn't the goal of it. But because I had that positive self-talk, I was able to listen at a deeper level to what the person actually needed and then to really help them after. Okay. So with that in mind, this is this whole, this is a critical part of our journey. It's all we're covering today, but I want to rehit like one or two things. First, finding your scripture is important at this point because it's where you can find things like triggers. In it's if you're reading, let's say the Bible, today's reading in the gospel reading talked about Jesus meeting a guy named Nathaniel, and he like kind of saw into what Nathaniel was doing, and he said, Look, I know you've been reading this scripture about Jacob going up and down a ladder. I am that ladder. And because of just that one sentence where he just intuitively knew what Nathaniel was reading, Nathaniel would follow him and do all kinds of great things. When we're immersed in our scripture, we can talk to other people who are immersed in our scripture in a very different way. And we can also talk to ourselves in a specific way. Taking whatever scripture you're reading and creating positive self-talk from it, whether it's memorizing verses, whether it's writing verses on cards, or again, we talked about being creative, drawing something or uh, painting something, you can create a positive trigger around so many things. Maybe creating an altar, around whatever it might be, planting a tree. Like it could be all kinds of things that are positive triggers. A tree can be a trigger, yes. Um, a, a book of scripture can be a trigger. 
Whatever you can do to create a positive trigger will change your life and your self-talk too. So whatever scripture you've to add one, I guess point, which is not intentional. Uh, it, maybe it was, I mean, if you listen last week, I lost all of my notes for like two years. So I've had to recreate a lot of things. And uh, so you never know, this might've been in the original file that's now in the ether back to this creating a, a trigger and self-talk around your scripture, applying it to your life will absolutely change your life forever and doing it consistently at first will be a chore. It's something you have to do or you make yourself do, but over time it will become so just part of your life. You won't even think about it and you'll do it. So I'm going to pray for you now and I'm going to give you a blessing and I'll send you off before I do. Please tune in Wednesdays. We're now going to be live streaming our Wednesday services, our Sunday services, as well as Sunday yoga, which was pretty cool. Uh, all on our Facebook page. If you're not in our Facebook group, just ask for it. Come on in. We're there. We're also on meetup.com under Avalon Chapel. You're welcome to see where all of our events are, whether those are in person or virtual. Love to see you at anything we can. And finally, again, if you're in Elizabeth, please drop by. Let us know how we're serving you, how this is helping you, etc. Let me pray for you. I'll give you a blessing and we'll get on our way. Oh Lord, we thank you so much for the people listening. I pray that they would follow their hero's journey this year, that they'd follow the path you've called them to walk down, that you give them your angelic support, surrounding them with angels, that those who are wise and have passed over those saints, ascended masters around us would just guide and direct us on our paths together. I pray that you'd help and smooth out any paths that aren't straight in front of us that are full of potholes and difficulty. And if we've fallen into one of those giant sinkholes or potholes that you'd uh, be the AAA that comes along and helps us to get out of it and get back on our path, guide us and direct us. We pray. Amen. And dear listener, may your life be blessed. May the road you walk on be smooth. May you be guided by angels. And may those times that are rough and challenging in your life be short and sweet and teach you how to continue on your path with resilience and energy, peace and joy. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. Bye.